Individuals that have post-concussion symptoms which have gone on longer than one month. That's the one that almost all concussion specialists are using for the diagnosis of post-concussion syndrome. Next one, Tyler. We, most of us use a checklist for concussion symptoms. Uh, we've devised one that has broken it out into the different domains of cognitive symptoms. So in the next slide, you'll see that the various symptoms can be broken out into those that are cognitive symptoms, such as the issues with confusion and concentration and memory, and the things that are so uh, disorganizing to somebody trying to stay in school. There are physical symptoms, which are far and away the more common symptoms, the headache, the sensitivity to light, sensitivity to noise, ringing in the ears. There are also vestibular ocular symptoms that include difficulties with balance, blurred vision, double vision, dizziness. There are sleep symptoms, usually right after a concussion. It's issues with sleeping more than usual, but as time goes on, certainly if there are weeks that go on with symptoms, the symptoms more commonly become now drowsy, fatigue, and trouble falling asleep. And then there are the emotional symptoms, which are so significant in almost everybody that's got post-concussion syndrome that goes on for an extended period of time, partly because of the injury itself and partly because of the fact that one's life has been totally disrupted in a terrible way. You've been taken away from what you wanted to do, what once was easy and rewarding is now no longer able to be done at all or can be done but is very difficult. As we move through the slide deck, Tyler, we see here that what is the best predictor of who's going to have a prolonged recovery from concussion, in addition to whether or not you had some pre-concussion uh, conditions, like if you came into a concussion with a history of migraine or a history of mood disorder or a learning disability, these are kind of red flags that go up that suggest that you may have a more protracted recovery than somebody that didn't have these conditions before their concussion. But far and away, the most important thing is how many symptoms you have and how severe they are. Uh, in our uh, checklist, we look at 26 possible symptoms and the higher number you get, uh, the more likely you're going to have a protracted course, especially if the symptoms are severe. As we see in the next uh, slide, the examination that the doctor is going to do on you for your concussion, in addition to going through the pre-morbid conditions you may have had before the con con concussion and going through the concussion symptoms that you have, He's going to carry out a neurological examination that's going to focus a lot on cognitive functioning. It's a very, very important part of it, but equally important should be eye tracking and eye function, especially your smooth eye movements as well as rapid eye movements called saccadic eye movements, and your ability to converge, which is like following your finger in toward your nose without it becoming looking like two fingers. Balance is another major area that's assessed and very commonly with uh, concussions, especially those where there's been a whiplash uh, injury, uh, neck pain and pain up the back of the head, cervicogenic uh, symptoms are very, very common. As we see in the next slide, the initial treatment for concussion is rest and adjustments to work, to school, avoiding obviously going back to any sports until one is asymptomatic and especially trying to avoid any further head trauma, um, limiting one's time with screens. These are things which pretty much was the treatment of choice for concussions 10 years ago. But over the last five years especially, after an initial period of rest, next slide, we see that what we're really focused on are therapies. And these therapies 
were published a few years back by a group of us that met in Pittsburgh and had this conference. And the therapies, as you'll see in the next slide, focus on your constellation of symptoms. In other words, for the ocular symptoms, you're referred for ocular therapy, where saccadic eye movements, smooth pursuit, convergence, testing, and training is carried out. For the vestibular symptoms or balance symptoms, it's a vestibular therapist. For the cervicogenic symptoms, it's cervicogenic physical therapy. And for the cognitive symptoms, it's referral for cognitive therapy, which is partly um, going through exercises, but mostly learning different ways of better retaining information, understanding how important it is, especially with post-concussion syndrome, that you have a quiet background, that you're not distracted while you're trying to concentrate. And also, most people find that they can learn a lot better by having not just visual learning, but auditory learning as well. So taping what you're trying to uh, learn, listening to audio tapes, uh, all are very helpful. In the next slide, we see that these different therapies are integrated because most people with post-concussion syndrome are not just going to have one symptom. They're not just going to have cognitive issues. Most people are going to have a combination. And so it involves um, often working with more than one therapist. And when the therapies are not in and of themselves um, as helpful as we would hope, the next step is pharmacy, and we see for cognitive issues, for emotional issues, next slide, for uh, depression and uh, anxiety issues, we have therapies uh, that are of the pharmacy nature that can be prescribed, but we use that as a last resort. Now that's kind of what happens in the center normally. And that's what would happen in most concussion centers, uh, we would hope, across the country. But these are very unusual times, obviously, with so many of us now sheltered uh, in place. But this need not necessarily make things worse, and it might actually uh, provide some opportunities uh, for improvement uh, that wouldn't have been there if we didn't have the chance to shelter in place. Right now, we're only able to do telehealth uh, calls uh, from our center, for instance. We can't have patients come in because all outpatient uh, patients have been kept out of the hospital as have bit visitors as well um, because of the concern about the contagiousness of this uh, COVID virus. Um, but individuals who are now sheltered at home um, for those that were trying to work and recover from their post-concussion syndrome at the same time, this gives them an opportunity to perhaps shut it down a little bit more than they might have been otherwise and recover more rapidly than they might have otherwise. Also, for individuals who are at home, most people, for instance, that have gone through vestibular therapy have been given a set of exercises, as is true of ocular therapy, to not only do while you're in therapy with your therapist, but to be, be carried out at home as well. And obviously this affords you the opportunity uh, to do that. Also for individuals where the emotional issues are keen, this is where the sheltering in place isn't necessarily perfect because the stress is there uh, Anybody obviously is concerned about whether they or their family, especially elder members of their family may contract this virus. Um, stress is not a good thing. Uh, it aggravates emotional symptoms, but it uh, clearly um, makes one think about the importance of what we're gonna close with today, which is meditation, but also things along that same line like mindfulness uh, and, and biofeedback. Uh, it's also true that there are two overriding non-specific areas of therapy 
for post-concussion syndrome that probably don't get enough attention because unfortunately it's not been quite as well documented, although there is quite a bit of literature emerging about the efficacy of them. And I'm referring to diet and I'm referring to exercise. And let me start with diet, not just with individuals with cognitive issues, but primarily for that group. Um, diet may help your symptoms and the diet that certainly has gained the most acceptance in not just post-concussion syndrome, but in the dementia field has been the Mediterranean diet where we're getting away from processed foods. We're using uh, whole foods. We're using fruits and vegetables, um, olive oil, that kind of thing. Um, the other area is exercise. And when we're referring to exercise, we're always talking about exercise at a level that does not provoke your symptoms getting worse. But exercise is not only a stress reliever, it most, most people feel better after it, but it also has been shown to have um, protective and uh, corrective uh, capabilities as well as one's cognition as well, both from the standpoint of neuroprotective uh, changes in the brain as well as from the standpoint of allowing one that builds up lactic acid to secrete more growth hormone normally, uh, which can help one with cognitive and somatic symptoms and especially those symptoms of feeling tired with lethargy slowed down. Um, so exercise is definitely something I would recommend for everyone. I think I heard Gracie indicate, uh, as is very true, that uh, if suddenly she's home and she's having to have more screen time than she would otherwise, uh, that can be a problem. But she's doing the absolute right thing in breaking up that screen time um, in segments before she starts to get more symptomatic and breaking it up with uh, periods of exercise is excellent. For screens in general, uh, if you haven't experimented before, most people find that an amber colored uh, piece of plastic over your computer screen will cause less eye strain, will cause less headache, will cause less exacerbation of symptoms than looking at a regular computer screen. And also the screen not as bright as it might otherwise be can be can be helpful as well. And conversely, when we're looking at uh, black and white pieces of paper um, with the black printing, most people find a blue uh, filter or a blue piece of uh, clear plastic over it will cause less eye strain and be helpful. Uh, that having been said, it's really something that needs to be experimented with, with uh, each individual because not everybody necessarily finds one versus the other color being more beneficial. These are just some general thoughts, Chris. Um, I think this is a very unique time. Um, the important thing is that just like from the standpoint of the virus itself, um, everybody will get through their post-concussion syndrome and they'll get through it best if they're working with therapies and they'll get through it best if they won't push their symptoms uh, to the level of, of uh, increasing them. Thanks, Bob. Uh, th thank you for that review and, and for that information. So we've got, we're getting some great questions put in. So we're going to do a little five-minute questions before we do the meditation. Um, and so one of, the, one of the interesting questions that was asked was, do we have any reason to believe that COVID-19 would be worse than somebody with a brain injury history? I think the answer is no, right? Well, we don't have clear-cut evidence, no, because the virus itself is not, thank God, is not primarily a cerebral virus. It's not primarily a brain virus. Okay, great. And then another great question from the group was, somebody said, I've had symptoms for more than 12 years, and, and now people are telling me that PCS doesn't last that long, and there's something else wrong with you. Obviously, I, as somebody who's been dealing with it for 17 years, I say, uh, I know I'm still different in, in three specific ways. What do you have to say about that? 
Well, I think unfortunately a very, very small percentage of individuals with PCS uh, will go on to have permanent symptoms. Almost all of them will be, uh, fortunately the symptoms will not be as severe as they once were early on for most people. Uh, but I would say that it is PCS in most of the cases with persistent symptoms, yes. Great, no, thank you. Um, I'm, I have love the chat going on. I see a lot of people mentioning online support groups are the things that we're gonna, we're gonna start to build a list and send it out to folks. Uh, so feel free to send those along. Uh, somebody asked about concussion glasses. Is that helpful? Concussion glasses. Yeah. I, I'm not aware of concussion glasses per se. We do indeed use uh, colored glasses uh, for individual with light sensitivity. And so clearly um, using uh, early on, if the light sensitivity is quite severe, staying out of the bright sunlight is, is, is certainly the best thing. But when you do have to go outside wearing glasses uh, is with uh, uh, green tint is certainly uh, appropriate. As your sensitivity diminishes, we lighten the shades of the green and green is still the favored shade. Okay. Now, how about the difference between post-concussion syndrome and CTE? Because that's an important one. Because I, I know the, the headline is having PCS does not increase your risk of CTE. They're separate issues. Would you explain what that, what's going on there? Yeah, with post-concussion syndrome, the symptoms have occurred right after the concussion. And with CTE, most of the time, the symptoms will not occur shortly after you've had your uh, athletic career, but rather decades later. And so there'll be an interval of 10, 15, 20 years before you start to pick up symptoms. Now, once you pick up the symptoms, unfortunately, there's great overlap between the CTE symptoms and the post-concussion syndrome symptoms. So that can be confusing. But technically, with post-concussion syndrome, it's, it's a linear line from your concussion symptoms that didn't completely clear uh, most cases they got better and and then in a few percentage they won't completely clear thank you all right and how about uh somebody asked ramping up their workouts with pcs what's the guideline the guideline is that you should be able to ramp up your workout if you can slowly gradually do it without making the symptoms worse either while you're doing it, immediately after it, or the next day. If the symptoms are worse while you're doing it, you should immediately stop. If they're worse later that night or the next day, you've done too much. You need to back down what you're doing. We want you to work at exercise, but under the radar of not provoking symptoms getting worse. Great. A couple more questions that popped in just for brevity, because we've talked about this, I'll answer them. How do you get telemedicine appointments? That answer is, it depends on your insurance, especially in the US. So uh, I had to look into this myself. So I would look into your insurance, but if you have telemedicine services, you have to request it through that and then probably find somebody who offers telemedicine services with concussions. So that's a little bit of a, everyone's on their own path there. Uh, somebody asked about neuroendocrine symptoms. So we just talked about this. You just wrote something we're about to add to our website. Do you wanna to quickly touch on uh, when you start thinking about neuroendocrine with PCS? Yes, the pituitary gland can be injured with uh, head trauma. It's not highly likely to happen, but it can happen and does happen. And the pituitary symptoms of hypothyroidism, hypoadrenalism, hypotestosterism, low growth hormone can mimic the post-concussion symptoms of being cognitively fuzzy, being fatigued, being lethargic, being slowed down. So in individuals with protracted post-concussion syndrome symptoms, we always like to do a blood profile screening of pituitary studies, looking at thyroid, uh, cortisone for the adrenal gland, uh, ACTH as well, looking at growth hormone, looking at testosterone, prolactin, uh, to make sure that there isn't a pituitary abnormality, because if there is, then it can be very quickly alleviated uh, by hormonal supplementation until the gland starts to work on its own normally again. 
All right, last two questions. You've touched on uh, vis or being overstimulated visually. What about you're very sensitive to sound? What's your recommendation on how to deal with sensitivity to sound day to day? Tough. Uh, some people have found that using earplugs are useful. Not earplugs that totally eliminate your ability to hear, but one that just cancels it somewhat. Um, it's pretty much like the um, same thing with the vision, and that is um, to the extent you're super sensitive, you want plugs that are going to be in a little tighter, and as you have less in the way of sensitivity to noise, uh, you, you, you back them out. All right, thank you. Um, sending a message. All right, and I, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna end with one last quick statement just to, so we can get to the meditation. I, somebody asked a question. It's always a great sort of uh, thing that makes you fired up. Uh, how do you educate people deal with my PC, you know, dealing with my PCS when they're accusing you of making it up or milking it uh, and they, because their expectations are wrong about what post-concussion uh, recovery can be? And you know, that's actually that's why we exist. That's why the Concussion Legacy Foundation started. It was all around this weird you know, headache that I had. I didn't find Dr. Canto until three months in. And, and even then, I didn't understand what I was dealing with. And still today, people don't understand what it's dealing with. So I know it's frustrating. Uh, I know it's difficult. I used to say, you know, uh, you know if, if people are giving you a hard time about and telling you you're exaggerating, you know, send them to our website or, you know, send me a note and I'll call them and I'll, I'll yell at them and I'll tell them, for God's sake, <laughs> you're the problem here. It's not them. You, you, you injure your brain. You don't know which way it's going to go. You know, we got 86 billion neurons, trillions of connections in there. You, you rattle that cage and things can change. The, the message here and the overall message of all this is it. We know it stinks. Everybody here appreciates it. We're with you. Brighter days are ahead. I feel 10 times better than I did 17 years ago. It's still not 100%. You just, it's the riding out those plateaus, as James said. You're not better. It's not a consistent growth, but you get there.